Today, in my Home Assistant Dashboard series, we're going to look at making your first script and activating that script with a button on your dashboard. So starting on our dashboard, where we left off last time, if we go down to Settings and navigate to Automations and Scenes, the well, first thing you'll notice is I have quite a bit here. Yours very likely might be empty. But that's fine because the process is the same regardless. And for today, we're going to go over to Scripts, and then we're going to select Add Script. Now, in Home Assistant, a script is a way for us to control multiple devices at the same time to take conditions into account to determine how those devices should be controlled. And generally, just allows you to do basic things like, say, turn all of your lights on at once instead of having to go through each individual light bulb or light switch. Now, when we make a new script, we can start by naming the script. We will want to call it something other than new script because Home Assistant uses the name of the script to determine which script you want to run. We can also set an icon, just like what we've done in the past with the buttons on our dashboard. And then the next thing we see is this mode option. Now, mode affects how the script runs if another instance of the same script is already running. There are specific use cases where you might want to use restart, queued, or parallel. But for most use cases, the single or the default option here is perfect. So that's what we're going to leave it on. Then, once we scroll down, we are introduced to a sequence. Now, this is called a sequence because it happens in order. The first thing in this sequence is what's going to get done first. The last thing is what gets done last. If you are controlling a large number of devices, you might see a small delay between the first device being controlled and the last device being controlled. Normally, that delay is going to be less than a second, so it's not big, but it can occur. For today, though, we're going to keep this script fairly small. Now, the first default action type here is device, and this one's fairly straightforward. We can select a connected device, say, helps if I spell correctly, a fish tank outlet, which is the outlet controlling the light on my fish tank, and then we can select from the various options that that device has presented to Home Assistant, what we want it to do. Now, this is a basic outlet. So we can turn it off, on, toggle, meaning switch its current state, or have the little indicator light on it blink. So if you have a whole bunch of these, you can see which one you're trying to control. If I set this to toggle, we can test to make sure any of our little blocks here are working correctly by going to our three dots and clicking Run Action. We see it toggled the fish tank light. Doing it again, turns the light back on. We can also select for more advanced devices. For example, if I select Pendant, which is a Zigbee controlled light bulb that has the ability to change brightness, color, color temperature, what we'll find is that we have shockingly little control over it. We have the ability to turn it on or off, but we can't select the color, or we can't specifically select the brightness of the light bulb. That's because we're going to need to go to call service for this one. If we go to call service, and specifically the service I'm looking for here is light on, we're presented with a plethora of options here multiple different options for RGB, multiple different options for color temperature, for brightness value. And currently, we also don't have a device selected. Now, this is where Home Assistant doesn't get to do the thinking for us. The first thing we need to do is select the device. And what you'll likely notice here is that some of these devices are not going to have things like color associated with them. These outlets, for example, I can't change the color of an outlet. 
I also can't change the color of my Raspberry Pi running Volumeo. I'll link to those videos if you haven't seen them. But if I go to a light that I know has color control, I should be able to control the color. But it's still a bit more complicated than that. Different lights, depending on who they are manufactured by, take different inputs in order to determine what color to be. That's why we have multiple options for RGB. I believe, I could be wrong, don't quote me on this, companies like Philips Hue, or Philips with their Hue lineup, use names to control their color, in which case you need to know the specific name of the color you want. Other companies can use either a four-digit or a five-digit color value, depending on how many LEDs, the type of LEDs, what commands the light bulb is set up to receive. And there's no way for the light bulb to communicate that with Home Assistant. So it's up to us to do a little bit of testing to make sure our light is working correctly. Now, to test, we can go ahead and select the thing we want to test. In my case, I'm just going to select the standard color here. And then if I select the black box, I'll actually get a pop-up, which I have to figure out how to show you here. Okay, now that you should be able to see the color window, in order to select color, I simply need to either enter values manually or select a nice color. To test to make sure that this is working for my bulb, all I need to do is select Run Action. Now we get the little pop-up that says Action Run Successfully, but I can also see the light bulb, and I can see that it clearly matches the same blue that I defined here. Always trust your eyes more than Home Assistant. This first RGB selector here is the correct one for me to use for my light bulb. But I think for this script, what I want to do is control color temperature. Now, once again, we have multiple values, so go ahead, test your light bulb first. I recommend doing them one at a time to determine which one works. Find a color value that's nice. Same thing with brightness. Test them first. And if all those are correct, and we hit Run Action. I think that one you'll be able to notice. My light turned on, it's at 100% brightness, and now it's on a nice warm whitish color. Now, I could continue to add more devices, either by adding more light bulbs here. Make sure that all the devices you add to one call service are compatible with each other, so that you're not sending uh, commands that a bulb can't or a device can't accept. We can also add additional actions by clicking Add Action here at the bottom. Now it defaults to device. Now for today, I'm just going to show you one more thing. Conditions or if-then statements. So we'll start by looking at an if-then statement. An if-then statement allows us to say if something is true. For example, if my fish tank is on, then do something specific. Play music. Turn on the light. If-then statements only apply to the single little if-then box. Now there's quite a bit more here to dive into if you're not already familiar with if-then and else statements. But for today, I'm just going to look at condition. Now condition works about the same as an if-then statement, but instead of applying just to its one box, this applies to the entire script that we've written. Meaning, if this condition is met, keep going past it. If this condition isn't met, stop. Now, I mentioned earlier that this script happens in order. So if I want my light turning on to depend on the condition, I need to move the condition statement above the light statement. To do that, we can simply reorder them by selecting this Move Up button, which jumps everything around. But if we zoom out, we can now see that our condition card is above the call service card. So whatever we set this condition card to, the script will check, is that condition true? If it is true, then keep running. If it isn't true, stop.
Now for this condition, I'm going to go to device and I'm going to select fish tank light. And I'm going to say fish tank outlet is on. So what the script is doing here is checking to make sure the fish tank light is on and then only turning the other light on if the fish tank is on. Maybe I don't want to wake up my fish if they're sleeping. If I go ahead and save this script, the script will save, and now we can navigate back to our dashboard. So once we're on the dashboard, whichever dashboard we want to add this button to, we can go edit. We're going to edit the grid we created last time. Again, check out that video if you haven't seen it. I'm going to add another button to this. For this button, I simply need to select the test script from the entity. It gets an icon and a name just like everything else. And here, I'm going to have show state set to on. That gives us a little off below it. I'm just going to do this for the moment so that it's easier to see the behavior of the script. Click save, done. And now, if I click this, my light will turn on. Everything we've programmed into that script, I can run by simply clicking the button on my Home Assistant dashboard. We can go ahead and check to make sure the condition we set functions by turning my fish tank light off. This way, it, my light shouldn't turn on, it should stay off. And if I click the script, we'll notice two things. One, I don't get brighter, the light doesn't turn on. But two, this never shows as on. It doesn't change to yellow. The off doesn't turn to on. If I turn fish tank on one more time, if I click it again, we'll see just briefly, it turns yellow and the off turns to an on. Now, a script doesn't have any way to check the state of devices. So it only shows as on for that brief moment that it's running. If you have a longer script, that could be a longer brief moment. But in general, it will just stay as a little blue icon that you can click to run whatever the script is set to run. So that's been writing a script and adding it to our Home Assistant dashboard. If you want to see more content, click some of the buttons down below, preferably not the dislike button.